Holy crap, it's Monday, but everything's gone to hell in a handbasket. Let's talk about what's come up over the weekend. All right, for everybody in cyber world, we've been living under uh, pretty much constant attack 2020, but it got really real this weekend. So there was a major note on a few big, big compromises that occurred. Won't go into company names here because you don't want to bash anybody. I think they were already getting smashed on by everybody that has a you know chance to say something about it. But really, the most important thing for me is looking at what's actually gone on, the realities of the compromise, and taking away some points from that. So let's talk about the big one, uh, which is this company that does, according to their site, IT management stuff. Okay, IT management, that's big because, well, these guys have, according to what they've referenced, 300,000 customers worldwide, including the military, Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, educational institutions, and more than 425 of the U.S. Fortune 500. So the fact that this is IT management software that's running in something that big, that dispersed on that many entities is concerning. Uh, yeah, and this is part of the network monitoring product, which was compromised therein, which again makes you think, well, why would you do that if you were an organization trying to gain information? Because you see everything, because you have admin access and control on all kinds of interesting stuff. I read up all the research that we currently have on this, spent the, the majority of the weekend going through it and really getting into um, what is there and what is worth really considering on an immediate snapshot. Of course, this is not all inclusive, but this is what I think you can get from it very, very quickly that's of value. <clears throat> Essentially, what this thing looks like is that the typical APT opera modus MO is where they're going after the system, getting something inside of a DLL, getting it to where they want it to go, operating as part of the installed software package, and then being very, very low and slow. Um, points of note that I took away from looking at the advisory here is that the amount of OPSEC that had to be used for this to be delivered required patients re required a lot of reconnaissance consistently covering their tracks and logs and they, things like that and using very very difficult to attribute tools it doesn't talk about necessarily zero days and you know crazy malware or whatever but it does talk about very very high levels of opsec very patient operators and folks that are willing to wait a long time to continue to move laterally <clears throat> interestingly enough it also says that analysis indicates that these compromises are not self-propagating which also is indicative of a focused effort where you have operators on keyboard doing things. This is not some sort of script kitty deal where they just fired off a bunch of commands, bought a ransomware dropper for 50 bucks and fired and, you know, and, and hit whatever they could. This is people on keyboard with directive guidance uh, and, and being pushed to do things at a very specific time so that they weren't detected. Each of the attacks require meticulous, and this is from the actual advisory, meticulous planning and manual interaction. A physical human on a keyboard must do something to make these things work. You do that when you are a nation state level operator so that you are directed by your leadership to do something. This this is this is a big deal. This is not just, a, oh, you know, um, you know, hacker douchebag in his mom's basement with a bunch of monsters and a hoodie is doing things. Um, let's let's be let's be real about this now. The the government has sort of tagged the actors behind this campaign as being affiliated with APT29. Cozy Bear, FireEye is calling it UNC2452. Um, there's different namiology for different groups, but looks like that's probably where it is based on TTPs. However, comma, I think it's also worth everyone understanding that this is also part of a tactic of a really good APT, especially one that's this meticulous with this good of opsec is you false flag if you can, and you do things that will get another organization blamed. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it was APT29. However, it looks like it was, but just you know, be real about that. It could also be false flag operations. Wrote about that in my book. It, it happens all the time. It's a pretty common tactic. Um, it was inside a digitally signed component of the software framework, uh, you know, backdoor communications, third-party servers, um, I'll put the link to the actual technical breakdown of it in the video down here at the bottom. I just hit my computer. Whoops. Um, but for everybody to go look at and read, I think it's worth your time if you're into this stuff. A couple of other things that are indicative of just how focused, operationally cognizant, and careful these types of operations can be. And maybe this is your first time really hearing about how some of this stuff is done with uh, an, 
an APT organization on the wilds, right, is that there's a dormant period of about two weeks. So even once this malware package was delivered, it didn't do anything. It just sat there for a couple of weeks in hiding and waiting before it actually went live. And why do you do that as an operator? You do that so that you aren't detected because when people typically look for things to go weird is when you download an update, when you install software. If you download it, install it, and something goes crazy right then, then it's a problem. If you download it, install it, and nothing happens for two weeks, it's just network traffic. Something did whatever it did, it's in a patched update, blah, 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 life goes on. Uh, also, accesses for lateral movement were not the same accesses that were used for administrative access. So that means that the organization that conducted this attack had people doing reconnaissance to figure out which accounts and which usernames and which passwords did which things so that they could use different ones to move laterally within different organizations. Pretty interesting. I mean, this is, this is meticulous planning and deep, deep recon to get this stuff right. Um, the backdoor uses multiple obfuscated block lists to identify forensics and antivirus tools running as processes, servers, and drivers. So the malware itself, what it's using is actually <laughs> defending itself from being removed and looking for uh, forensic tools, antivirus solutions, uh, anything that's there that it might get picked up on. Again, very indicative of a well-planned, uh, very cognizant, very operationally focused organization trying to get deep, deep, deep into a system so that they can stay there as long as they want. Now, quickly, um, there is some detection stuff that's out there. Again, I'll put the link in the, in the write-up to what fire I had, which is a super write-up, but it does say, and I think this is something useful in the context of enabling ZT, geolocating IP addresses used for remote access may show an impossible rate of travel. If a compromised account is being used by the legitimate user, and the attacker from disparate IP addresses. So basically what that means is if you're able to look at the account access request and see that I requested it and I'm physically in Kansas, but it says that I'm over in Kuala Lumpur 30 seconds later, not possible, look for that type of stuff and be able to use that as a, this doesn't make sense, we can dial it on this and vector in on it so that we can remove an account that might be compromised. Um, there are other things that are in there. Again, I'll put the list under. There's a whole bunch of domain and subdomains that are listed. Uh, there's a bunch of IP addresses. And then the MITRE ATT&CK framework has been broken down and applied to this particular instance. So, big crazy week. More big crazy stuff coming, I think, because we're going to see that this is going to cause further on proliferation. And we're going to see where this is embedded in other areas. And now, um, in 2020, the world is waking up to this cyber thing is a real deal uh, problem that everyone's going to have to deal with with these types of activities. So interesting stuff. Uh, keep your head down. Uh, keep your spirits up. Maybe we're almost through 2020, but regardless, here we are. Welcome to the world of APT and nation state level hacking.